Object-oriented programming is one of my favorite computer science topics. You can think of object-oriented programming like a pie. No, not that kind of pie. A pie is an acronym for abstraction, polymorphism, inheritance, and encapsulation. With their powers combined, they create the four pillars of object-oriented programming. Now, the definition of object-oriented programming, and instead of saying object-oriented programming the whole video, I'm just gonna say OOP. OOP is a programming paradigm based on the concept of objects. Objects can contain data in the form of attributes or properties and actions in the forms of functions or methods. I got that from a quick Google search. Basically what it means is we're taking real world objects and representing them within code. Let's take a computer monitor for example. Some of its attributes could be the size or the resolution. These would be its properties. Some of its actions could be turning on or off the monitor, changing the brightness. These would be functions or methods. Now the prerequisite for this video is that you've worked with one language at least that has the concept of classes. The most popular ones being Python, C++, Java. So let's take a look at the first pillar of OOP, which is abstraction. Abstraction means to only show the necessary details to the user of the object. For instance, say we go back to our computer monitor example. When a user is turning the monitor on or off, they don't really care about the inner mechanisms of what's going on. They just want to push a button and see the screen turn on. And that's really what abstraction is. You're only exposing the necessary details needed by whomever is using the object. And the best thing about abstraction is that it really decouples the user from the underlying implementation. Let's take a look at a coding example. So over here we have an empty Java project. So if we want to go ahead and create a new class and say we're building some type of video game and we want to have an object for enemies. So let's go ahead and create something called enemy. And right now it's completely empty, but what can we, what attributes can we give to an enemy? You know, maybe an enemy can have health and here let's just give them the ability to say something. Let's just have them say, I am an enemy, you better run. So if we go back to our main class here, let's create an enemy object and let's just go ahead and invoke that talk method. So if we go up here, we see that as a user, we only care about calling this talk method. We don't care about the underlying implementation here about, you know, I mean, it is pretty simple in this case, but either way, uh, we don't really care how this gets printed out. For example, we could have split this into two print statements, but from a user point of view, when we call talk, it still prints out the exact same thing. So this is the idea of abstraction is that we only care about calling the method, we don't care about the underlying implementation. The next pillar of OOP is inheritance. Inheritance is a very powerful feature and it basically allows you to have code reusability. Inheritance is useful when you have an existing class and say you want to build a new class that uses the stuff from the previous class but you want to add additional features onto it. Classes which are derived from an existing class are either called subclass, extended class, or child class. And the class from which that subclass is derived from can be called either the super class, the parent, or the base class. So right now we just have this enemy class, but let's go ahead and create a new class here. Say we want to have an enemy that's like a vampire. So what we want to do is we want to take that enemy class and we want to expand upon it with our vampire class. So what we can do here in Java is just going to be extends enemy. And the language here can vary from language to language, but the idea is going to be the same. So if we go back here, we see that this class here is completely empty. But if we go back to our main and we want to go ahead and create a vampire object, we see that v.talk exists. So if we go ahead and call that, we see that down here, it prints out, I am an enemy, you better run. And if we go back to this vampire class, we see that this is completely empty. But because the fact that it extends the enemy class, it has the existing code here. So we don't have to rewrite it. So it reduces the amount of code that we have to write. Now, obviously we don't want the vampire class to say, I am an enemy, you better run. So what we can do is we can override the talk method. And the way to do that is basically just by implementing its own talk method. So we can have the vampire class say, I want to suck your blood. Now we see that the vampire class inherits that talk method from enemy, but 
the program is going to say, hey, since this already has its own talk method, I'm actually going to go ahead and use that. So without changing anything in the main method, if we go ahead and run that, we see that it does in fact change to I want to suck your blood. So that right there is the idea of inheritance. All right, so now that we're halfway through, that leads us to the question of the day, which is what is your favorite object-oriented programming language and why? Let me know in the comments down below. So this leads us to the third pillar of object-oriented programming, which is polymorphism. Now, polymorphism is probably the most advanced topic out of these four, but I'm gonna try and explain it to you guys in a way that makes sense. So polymorphism comes from the word poly, which means many, and morph, or morphism, which means forms. But I think that's kind of a confusing way to look at it. Basically, it allows you to determine what kind of function to run while the program is running, which will make a lot more sense when we look at the code. So if we go back into our program here, let's go ahead and create another class. And let's create a werewolf object. Let's go ahead and have the werewolf class extend enemy. And let's go ahead and override the talk method again. And let's go ahead and have it say, I don't know what werewolves say. Let's just have it say, I'm going to bite you. So now if we go back to our main class and let's refactor this a little bit, let's call this vampire. So let's go ahead and invoke the talk method on both of our objects. And we see that they do call their respective talk methods. So at this point, our hierarchy is we have an enemy as the parent class and we have werewolf and vampire, which are both child classes. So werewolf and vampire are sibling classes. So now let's go ahead and comment this out. So let's go ahead and create an enemy pointer and let's set it equal to our vampire object. And now let's go ahead and call enemy.talk. So at this point, what do you think is gonna happen? Is it going to call the talk method on the enemy class or on the vampire class? What do you guys think? Let's go ahead and run that and we see that it calls the vampire classes talk method. So in object-oriented programming, you can call methods on a class if what's calling it is a pointer of the parent object, as we just saw in this example here. So let's go ahead and look at something a little bit more advanced. So at this point, we have an array of enemies, and inside of that array, we have our vampire object and our werewolf object. Now we want to invoke the talk methods on the vampire and werewolf objects. So if we go ahead and run that, we see again that it does call the respective talk methods. And this is the power of polymorphism, is that the talk method was figured out during runtime. It looks at what kind of object it's pointing to, it looks at the method on that, and if it's overridden, it'll call the child objects method. The fourth pillar of OOP is encapsulation. Encapsulation is built on the idea of data hiding. This is where we restrict access of certain properties or methods of our object to whatever is calling that object. So for example, if we go back to our code here, let's go ahead and delete everything up until our vampire object. And as we see here, we have this enemy class here. Let's go ahead and make this public, meaning that we can access it from basically when we're calling it. So when we have vampire dot health, let's go ahead and initially set that to like 25 and then we can go ahead and print that out. So if we print that out, we see down here that it does print out 25. So we can directly access health from our vampire object. Now, generally this isn't good practice. You generally don't want whatever's calling your object to be able to change the properties within that object. So what we could do is we can go to our enemy class and instead of making this public, we can go ahead and make this private. Now, if we go back to main, we see that we get an error here saying that health has private access in enemy. So this is mostly for safety. Basically, you don't have something that inadvertently changes the property of an object. But say for some reason you do need to change the health, we can use what are called getter and setter functions. For example, we would go back down to our enemy class and we would implement these like this. So right now we have two methods. We have something called get health, which simply prints out the health. And we have another one called set health which takes in a parameter and sets the health to that parameter. So if we go back here, we can just say, instead of setting the health directly, we can call dot set health 25, and we can delete this part here. And if we want to print it out, well, we can simply call vampire dot get health. 
And if we go ahead and run that, we should get the same result and we do. So that's really the idea of encapsulation is that we are encapsulating our properties within the object. And we can do that by setting our properties to private. So instead of just giving everyone access to our properties, we can later on set getters and setters to give the user the control over what we want them to be able to set and get. So those are the four pillars of object-oriented programming, abstraction, polymorphism, inheritance, and encapsulation. I hope you guys found that video helpful. Um, like I mentioned, it's really one of my favorite subjects in computer science. I've even had interviews where the entire interview revolved around object-oriented programming and object-oriented design. So it's definitely an important subject. It's definitely something that I've used in the real world. And I think that it's a concept that really every programmer or every software engineer should have a good grasp on. But yeah, make sure you guys smash the like button. Uh, it definitely helps the video move up in the rankings and please subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. But other than that, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.